You hear it all the time. If you want to grow your business on LinkedIn, you need quality connections, not quantity. You want a tight network of quality people in your industry, quality people who will buy from you, quality people who are your clear path to success. The advice makes sense, but then you look at the people giving the advice and many of them are LinkedIn high achievers with tens of thousands of connections. Does that sound like a tight network? Does that sound like they inspect every single one of their connections for quality? No, it screams quantity. So you have conflicting information, quality or quantity. You don't want to make the wrong choices or have you miss out on huge opportunities. It's like a squirrel trying to decide if it should hoard a whole bunch of acorns or seek out that juiciest one. I don't know if acorns are juicy. So what if we created a strategy that brings together the best of both worlds? That's what I'm going to show you. But first, we need to understand how quality and quantity by themselves help you before we put them together. Now, one of the biggest reasons to focus on quality connections is time. And if you're regular to this channel, you might have seen this chart. It's how many weeks you might live before you die. And bear with me here. I promise you this will actually get back to LinkedIn. Each square here represents a week. If I live till I'm 90, if I'm lucky, I only have these many squares left. So I have to be super careful with my squares. I only have so many squares to spare. So on LinkedIn, if I'm reaching out to people to connect with and eventually engage with, I'm happy to spare squares with people who can make an obvious direct impact on my business, like referral partners and clients. It's the most efficient use of time. Now the thinking here isn't 100% right, and we'll get to that soon, but in general, you need to be mindful of the squares. Another reason to lean into quality has to do with the LinkedIn algorithm. Quality connections are more likely to want to read your posts because your topics will matter to them. In other words, they're going to find your posts more relevant. And relevance plays a huge role in LinkedIn deciding which of your connections and how many of your connections will see your posts in their newsfeed. I'm not going to say that a quality network is going to make your posts go viral like a squirrel meme, but it'll help. Side note, I hate squirrels. It's a long story that has to do with squirrels finding my Kia Soul delicious, but this is not the video for that. So what about quantity? First off, having more connections just looks better. Yes, it's a reflection of the sad state of humanity, but we can either fight it and get mad about it or just go with it. Also, the larger your first degree network, the larger your second and third degree networks. That means you are way more visible to people and therefore you're going to show up in a lot of searches when someone is searching for someone who does what you do. This is why I actually like it when a pushy salesperson tries to connect with me on LinkedIn. Yes, I know pushy salespeople on LinkedIn should be banished to squirrel hell, but I will gladly accept their connection request and then say no thanks to their sales pitch, but I'm happy to stay connected. Boom! More exposure and 95% of the time they won't bother you again. Now there's another reason to go for quantity and let me explain this with a quick story. So it's my first year of business, finances are tight and I get a LinkedIn connection request from a stranger who doesn't have a profile picture and doesn't even have their name on the profile. They're using their company name and it's some entertainment company. The whole thing looks sketchy. I can't tell you how close I was to hitting that ignore button, but something told me not to judge. I accepted the connection request. And it turns out this guy, he wasn't a serial killer. He was a serial entrepreneur, which is way better. He just didn't know how to set up a LinkedIn profile and he just needed a whole bunch of social media help overall. And he was starting a new business. For me, that led to $30,000 worth of business, which I really needed as a startup. So I'm going to give you some tough love here. Don't judge. None of us are mind readers and you can't tell from someone's LinkedIn profile whether they're about to start a business or change jobs or go through some other life change. And you certainly don't know all the people they know who could also be your customers. That's why it's okay to spare squares with people who might not obviously seem like quality. They could be quality if you just give them a chance. Okay, so now how do we pull together the best of quality and the best of quantity into one strategy so you can grow your business on LinkedIn? And we're gonna start this time with quantity. Number one, accept every connection request, unless the person seems to be a serial killer ilk or they're a squirrel. Also, if someone is engaging with your content in a positive way, no matter who they are, engage back with them, connect with them, DM them and thank them for engaging with you. There's clearly something that you've put out there on LinkedIn that resonates with them. So see where that goes. And overall, treat everyone on LinkedIn with an open mind. Okay, now for quality, which is essentially your target market. First, optimize your profile for your target audience and craft your posts for your target audience. You don't want broad appeal with your content. You want to niche down. 
You're also going to proactively seek out quality as you build your network. In other words, you're still going to accept connection requests from everyone, but when you're reaching out to connect to someone, focus on quality. And when you engage with other LinkedIn accounts, in other words, you're liking or commenting or reposting other people's posts or you're DMing people, most of that engagement should focus on quality. But let's say you find people on LinkedIn that you're not connected to yet, but you want to message them first. How do you message them for free without premium? Or if you have premium, how do you message them without having to use an in-mail? So watch this video in the top right corner because I'm going to show you three different ways. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.